Hey folks, welcome back to another roguelike game. Uh, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to play next and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to jump straight to one of my favourites. Uh, we The last game I played was Moria and uh, I had a, re you know, a reasonably good run on it and I died. <laughs> but it, playing Moria really made me realise quite how far roguelikes have come in the last, well, 40 years. I think uh, I think Mor Moria came out in 1983. I think that was the first version, uh, but it was you know the, the version that I was playing was kind of mostly developed around 1988. Uh, we're going to jump forward to nearly 40 years now, and this is a game called Sil Q. This is uh, this is one of the branches of Moria, then through Angband, and it's called uh, and it's actually a branch of a game called Sil. This is Sil Q. And uh, it's it's taken the tol the Tolkien theme and stripped out everything in the game that is not Tolkien like. So there's nothing in here that would feel out of place in one of Tolkien's books. Okay, uh, particularly, and it's set during the first stage of Middle Earth. So during the the you know the events that happen during the Silmarillion. It's a really really wonderful game. It's div it's just really really good. I'm, I can't wait to show you this. Why is it so good? Well, not only is it just superbly thematic to, you know, Tolkien's work. I mean, you know, obviously it's still a, it's a roguelike game. It's a video game. So, uh, you know, I'm sure purists will be able to find things they don't like, but it's, it's pretty faithful. Things like the magic system, you know, there's no throwing fireballs or anything like that. All the magic's to do with song, uh, which is very Tolkien-esque. Um, you can forge items in it, you know, magical items and the magical items are very thematic and things that you might actually find in one of Tolkien's books or from his legendarium. Uh, all the monsters in it are straight out of Tolkien. So there's lots of orcs and there's things like balrogs and, uh, you know, wargs, wolves. It's just stuff that you would find in one of his books, basically. There's there's no, like, pixies and, uh, you know, stuff from D&D, &D, like beholders. You know, there's there's none of that. So it's it's actually a, re it's a really, really beautiful kind of presented game but the other thing is is that game mechanics wise it's it's incredibly good too i think i was considering playing the tutorial and i think that might be uh, i don't know maybe i'll just play it i think i'm just going to play the game and you know you we, we'll talk about it as we go um so the world was young the mountains green no stain yet on the moon was seen welcome to sill a game of adventure set in the first age of middle earth when the world still rang with elven song and gleamed with dwarven mail Walk the, dark, walk the dark halls of Angband, slay creatures black and fell, rest the shining Silmaril from Morgoth's iron crown. Okay, so it's even using some of the kind of the rhyming patterns that you get in the original Silmarillion. It's really, really nice. Okay, so let's uh, we'll, we'll create a new character. There are four different races to choose from. Uh, there's two different elven races. You've got dwarves and then you've got men. Uh, they're, they're given their original names. So you've got the Noldar. Uh, the Noldar are known as the Deep Elves, for they are the most learned and inventive uh, of the Elden kindreds. They, uh, they saw the light of the tall trees, or the two trees in Valinor, and gained much in law and skill. They are tall and lithe, yet so strong of spirit that they can endure vast hardship. Their hair is mostly dark and their eyes grey. Uh, the Sindar are the Grey Elves, who never saw the blessed light of the two trees, but found an echo of it in their queen, Melian the Maiar. They are less learned and, uh, and more powerful than the Noldar. Oh, sorry, they are less learned and powerful than the Noldar, but they have fair voices and are gifted in song. Okay, then we've got dwarves. I'm not going to read all this. And then we've got the Edain. Uh, the Edain are, are the men. Uh, men are, you'll see that the, the ability scores, you've only got four, four abilities. Well, sorry, you've only got four characteristics, strength, dexterity, constitution, and grace. It's really, really stripped down. But as you'll see, it's not reducing complexity. It's, it's just got, it's got less stuff than Angband. And it's a better game for it, in my opinion. Uh, it's a more focused game. It's definitely one of the best of the, you know, the Yendor style games, in my opinion. Uh, so we're going to play with, you, you're recommended to play with the Noldar. The reason is, look, you get a plus one dexterity and plus two constitution and plus two grace. You also get proficiency with bows and song affinity, as all elves do. Uh, you'll notice the Sindar are actually, they're actually less strong than the men. Now, the men are the baseline, uh, the, the Edain are the baseline, so they... You start with strength, dexterity, constitution, and grace of zero, um, and yeah. So the other the others will have varying, um, you know, proficiencies. Let's choose the Noldor. Then you get to choose between the House of Feanor, the House of Fingolfin, and the House of Finarfin. Now these are all, you know, 
different flavors of elf basically so um i'm going to play with the house of fionnir i'm just going to keep it simple the other thing is that the house of fionnir are actually is actually really strong anyway uh, i think it's probably i don't know i think it's one of the stronger it's considered to be you know like a, the baseline strong pick so fionnir was the greatest of the noldor though proud and unyielding he created the Silmarils, which Morgoth later stole, and he led his house across the sea to Beleriand in pursuit. Those of Feanor's house are fiery in temper, but cap capable of great works of beauty. Um, Feanor was a bit of a dick, if you if you actually read the uh, Silmarillion. Like he he got the he he was a, you know a very proud person who caused a lot of problems, let's say, <laughs> but a very a legendary character, no doubt. Uh, so. Uh, so we start with strength zero and dexterity two, constitution two, and grace two. Strength mostly affects melee, melee damage. Dexterity affects, uh, as you see, look, you, you. So the way that the game is structured is you have the four, uh, you know, abilities, uh, ability classes. Uh, what do we, what do we call these? Yes, yeah, stats. So we have four stats. Each of the stats then affects the uh, skills that you have, and then each of the stats, uh, each of the skills has attributes. And you can uh, allocate those through leveling up. So basically, adding strength, look, you'll see. If you just look at where it says melee here, um, th this is what we're like unarmed, okay? So we're going to do 1d1 damage, okay? So that's just, you're going to do one hit point. That's your damage. And then this is the two hit that you get. You'll see if we increase dexterity, we're going to increase um, the, the two hit on melee bows. And we get uh, the armor here. This is, this is our evasion okay so armor's got two points uh two two kind of like abilities you've got the ability to evade and then you've got the damage reduction as well uh, so this is with with the two attacks it's two hit and the amount, amount of your damage and with the armor it's two evade and the amount that you negate so you this is a such an amazing game right because you can build yourself as a character who gets you know you might wear very heavy armor and then you're going to get hit more but you also negate more of the damage um, or you can have a character who doesn't wear very much armor at all, but has a really, really high evasion, so he rarely gets hit. Um, it's it's superb. When, when you when you see me playing it, you'll understand why I think this is an amazing game. I think the developer or developers who have you know have created Sil and Silq are geniuses um, or genii. So uh, I'm going to give a, a couple of points in strength. Now you'll see that you've got points left at the top, and the number on the right. Will tell you how much how many points it's going to cost to uh to to go up to the next one so um yeah to go up to level two look it's actually going to cost two points i think that's how it works um but you can so you can put one it's going to cost you one to go at one level then three to go up the next then six then ten blah 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 okay so we're going to put a couple in strength because you need you need decent melee in this game um it's probably advisable to put three in but there's other stuff you want to do too i'm going to put one in extra one in dexterity one in and more in constitution now grace basically grace is an interesting statistic it covers i think it covers your will yeah it, it covers perception will smithing and song smithing's your ability to create magical items which you will do in the game a song is your magic basically uh, perception is you know fairly self-explanatory and will is the way that you resist things like you know other magic i think if i remember right so uh, yeah we want some points in grace too I think we will, probably what we want to do is now Constitution three will give us Constitution is mostly hit points. Okay, this is going to give us thirty four. This this is the you know the current and this is the maximum. So we've got thirty four out of thirty four health and we've got thirty four out of thirty four vo voice. Think of think of voices in your magic points. Okay, these are this is your magic points. So um, voice is actually really important in the game. Um, I like to smith as well, but I think just for the first game, what we'll do is we'll we're going to go with. Then we're going to go with a sort of strength build and try and do as much damage as possible and um you know basically trying to we want to be able to hit hard as well i might get a little bit more in grace too so go with strength three dexterity four constitution three grace four we've not got a huge amount of hit points but we can make up for that by basically being hard to bit difficult to hit with this high dexterity okay so that's our, uh, our that's our stats now we want to allocate points to skills we get 5,000 points at the start of the game and uh, you can, you'll see that it, uh, again, there's a, there's a scaling amount. It's almost, uh, yeah, there's a, there's a scaling amount that it costs to increase beyond the first levels. So you'll see that our base stats actually gave us um, 
like we started with zero luck and we actually got plus four in all of these because of our various abilities actually it worked out quite evenly um smithing and song actually we get we get an extra bonus for being uh of the house of Fenor. so we've actually got five in those points so what we're going to do is what what is this for okay so adding melee is going to give you plus to hit okay and it also uh by by spending these points look we actually start with an experience pool of five thousand, which is what we're using to uh, what what we're using to upgrade these base ability these base skills so if you see we just put a whole bunch in melee you know that's as far as we can go we can get melee 13 we're gonna have plus 13 to hit so we're gonna hit very hot very very often super skillful combat but we're not gonna do so much well you won't have any other abilities so you don't really want to do that i think uh, if we're going to build a melee and a melee and an archery character which makes sense we want to put a little bit into melee and archery to start off with i'd like some in invasion and stealth i'm just going to basically do a bit of a balanced character this time around so we're going to have a little bit in everything now you don't have to actually pick all of these right now because this you you it because it's taken from your experience you can decide what you want to level up at any point in the game uh, you can't go back down though so once you've picked you're, you're stuck with it you can't respect your character um so yeah i I'm, I'm i definitely know that i want to put some into melee to start off the game start the game off and i'd like high evasion because we want to be able to dodge and i want quite high stealth because stealth's pretty important in the game um so i think what i normally do is i go into the game and then figure out what i want as i find items and stuff but i think for this one we're just going to bit we'll, we're going to build the character first um so i'd like yeah maybe we actually let's start with this so uh, you actually get a history here so you are one of several children of a smith from the house of fear you have light gray eyes straight black hair and a fair complexion does a bit of uh you know rpg stuff you can manually enter that if you want you can re-roll it you're the only child of an archer from the house of fear you have light gray eyes wavy golden hair and a fair complexion okay there we go and then uh then we can we we then we are given an age a height and a weight these are just you know fluff basically so six foot five is actually quite a tall quite a tall elf and then you can change all your you know you can change the age that kind of thing oh so to me at 1600 years you're quite young <laughs> actually really really tall look so anyway and then finally you hit enter and then you you can have a random name uh so uh Braylingol. that sounds like a good name an old name to me so let's pick those let's pick that one into the vast and echoing gloom more dread than many tunnel tomb down awful corridors that wind down to a menace dark enshrined down to the mountain's roots profound devoured tormented board and ground by seething vermin spawned of stone down to the depths they went alone okay so here we are it's an ascii roguelike but do not fear it still looks quite nice i think for an ascii game uh it's pretty simple to play it's actually got a very stripped down rule set there's not that many keys it's very much you know look there's only really a very small amount of commands there's don't you know most of the keys on the keyboard are used but you don't really need to use a lot of them but they're pretty similar to it's almost exactly the same of uh, as moria basically orang band okay so we managed to pick this lock in this door now on the first level you're likely to find in fact let's just close that up let's just see if we can find some items now you can you can go stealthy and move slow so uh, this is a really really nice stealth game i want to avoid that orc that we just saw there because we do not have any weapons yet as you, you'll see at the start of the game we we start the game with three fragments of lembus this is the elven waybread if you remember from the lord of the rings we've got a couple of wooden torches as well and we are equipping we're holding a, a curved sword so we've managed to grab a an, an orc scimitar now uh, that minus one 2d5 means we get to minus one to hit uh, because it's kind of unwieldy and it's 2d5 now the reason why it's 2d5 it does d5 damage um if you are strength one okay um but for every strength over sorry for every strength over zero you get you you get plus one i think and that's how it works uh is that right i think so yeah it might be out every, every strength over strength one actually it might be that you get an extra uh you get an extra dice so at strength three we get 2d5 if you were strength four you'd get 3d5 so that's how strength affects we weapons um the plus one means that we get plus one damage i think Is that right oh i've forgotten what that one means now yeah it might be um it might be the plus one damage also 
the other thing is about the, the the weight of the weapons really important so depending on the poundage you know like how many pounds will determine how far of the, you know how many dice you can get extra with the strength so for example if we had strength four or five i think we i think if we had strength yeah anything over four we are not going to get any more effect out of it one of the things you can do when you're smithing weapons is you can make them heavier or lighter so uh, obviously if they're lighter they're easier to use for you but if they're heavier then you can do more damage it's a really really it's a really really elegant beautiful roguelike system this is let's carry on so we managed to pick that lock what have we got over here we found four daggers and we got a stare down uh now down there we've got a monster uh, we got a wolf okay and he's sleeping so this has got a really cool stealth system let's just sneak you want to keep by the walls if you want to sneak because when you're you when you're standing by the wall you are less likely to be seen i'm going to grab those daggers uh we can throw those what else have we got it looks like we've got a staff or something here uh, there's a spear okay so there's a weapon and we've got a we've actually got a trap here as well a discolored spot we can disarm that okay we're going to grab the spear it's not auto pick up uh, you have to hit the, the comma key and then we're just going to hit w i oh, know we're going to use we're going to use the spear so we were wielding a curved sword now we've got the spear the spear is going to do 1d11 damage and it's not got an attack penalty that's so going to be a little bit better for us okay let's continue through this door okay the orc skirmisher notices you so we've been we've been caught what we're going to do is we're actually going to throw one of these daggers at this guy and if you just press f you'll just throw it like that there we go and we're going to throw it are we going to throw again and what was it it was c and we hit the orcs or the orc skirmisher and i'm gonna i'm gonna keep throwing at it c and f there we go and now he's within striking range so we can hit him with our spear okay so you missed the orc now if you can look onto the left hand of the, the screen this is the reason why we've got these other windows uh this is telling you what's going on with the combat rolls okay so here's me and here's the orc so this was me attacking this was the orc attacking you'll see that i missed here so what happened was i got a plus seven to attack because of my combat skill and uh, i i rolled a 16 okay and he rolled an 18 in his uh, defense okay and so he actually because he got a higher number and he gets plus three to defend uh, to evade because his evasion score was higher than my plus uh, to my hit i didn't get any i didn't actually make a hit now york hit me back and he's get only gets plus two to hit and he was fighting against plus seven evasion for me however he rolled an 18 and i only rolled a 14 so there was a four difference so he hit so the damage he did was 2d6 that's what weapon he does and if you look down here in the recall this tells you what uh you know uh the orc skirmisher he's one of morgoth's grim mockeries of the firstborn he has little armor but carries a cruel blade uh, he sometimes appears in groups he can be hit to attack plus two to attack 2d6 so it tells you what damage he does and it gives you it tells you how much experience you get from killing them when you meet them you gain experience and when you kill them you gain experience but this goes down for each one you see because obviously once you've seen a few of them you don't really get so much experience from like fighting them okay so and you, so here with york he hit us he got 18 to he rolled 18 to hit against our 14 uh, evasion roll he hit so you'll see this red four means that he, he got through 2d6 damage he rolled a three and we we don't have any armor at all so we're naked at the moment so he actually did three damage on us so we're, we've been hit and uh yeah so and we tried to hit again i think this is and this time we actually hit him so we got yeah i'm not going to go through this every single time by the way because they make an incredibly boring game but it's it's quite useful uh to, to understand what's going on here so for here for example we rolled 20 and uh yeah he, he only rolled 11 on his evasion so we, we we passed by nine now the more that you pass this number by the more chances you have of getting, getting a hit, critical hit so if you pass this by seven or more you can get a critical hit and you do more damage uh, so we, we actually did 2d5 damage there and we rolled a five he rolled a, he's he's got two armor so we did three damage okay so there we go i'm i'm not gonna again i'm not gonna do that every single time but it's just useful to know what's going on let's hit him again okay so he's fleeing now and he's running away from us now i'm trying to remember can you run in this game no i don't think you can i think you're always moving at your fastest speed so i'm gonna grab those daggers and another dagger and we killed him okay 
Now, there's a short bow on the floor. We're going to grab that and we're going to use it. And it, look, this is what's nice about this, these modern roguelikes. They've got loads of cool stuff. So this short bow, not only does it tell you what it does, but it tells you what key it's assigned to. So we just hit U and E and you're immediately, you don't have to look in the inventory, check what it is, what key it's been assigned to, which I think is really cool. Okay, let's see what's up on this floor. Because we want to try and get, we need some armor really. Oh, we've got an orc. We've got an orc following us. Let's see if we can lose him. And we're going to go in stealth. All right, he's come. Yeah, look. Oh, no, he did see us, so he shouted for help. Let's close this door here. Okay, he saw us. This is an orc scout. I'm going to try and kill him by throwing... Um, What was it? It was C. So throw C. Okay, flee in terror. Let's see if we can hit him again. Okay, we didn't quite hit him that time. Okay, hit the orc scout. He's nearly dead. We're gonna gonna try and throw this item again. Okay, we missed him that time. Uh, there's another orc. Yeah, there's another scout. Let's just try and go this way. See, those guys will they will they're annoying because they will call for enemies. They will call for help. So there are ways of dealing with them. Let me show you one of them. Uh, we've got a song here that we can learn. Uh, it's called the Song of Challenge. This, this this is a magic spell, basically, but they're all songs. Causes weak-willed foes to attack aggressively without regards for strategy. Enemies with ranged weapons will close to melee range. This is really nice to get those guys away from you. There's also there's other spells we can cast as well. The Song of Elbereth causes fear, so you can actually cause enemies to run away from you. Magic's really strong in this game, but you've got to use it right. Uh, we've got the Song of Freedom, which discovers traps, doors, and uh, enables you to get through rubble. Uh, it's just interesting. There's loads. Of, these are the skills as well that I was talking about. Okay, so when you've got, if we go back to our character sheet, you can upgrade your skills here, right? Or you can upgrade your uh, abilities, and abilities are what the the higher up in the skill points you go, the better abilities you can get. You can get some really good stuff. So I think we're going to start picking some of these now. They do cost experience points, and the more abilities you pick in one area, they're going to cost more experience. But we're going to go with a character with a you know combat character. Now, I'm going to go with Finesse because that will lower the base num number needed to get critical hits from with, with melee from 7 to 5 because I like that idea. Uh, we can also go with Power. This would give us plus 1 uh, damage sides. So if you're doing 1D, you know, 2D5, it'll actually give you 2D6. But it does make it um, harder to score critical hits. I'm actually going to go with the Finesse build. But let's leave that one. Um, I like Evasion as well. Now, um... You can either pick dodging or blocking at the start of the game, or we could increase our abilities to go higher now uh, to get parry or something like this. Dodging gives you a plus three bonus to evasion if you've moved on your last turn. Blocking gives you uh, double the protection roll for your shield against all attacks. So we don't have blocks, but parry we could get if we upgraded our skills further. So if we were to increase our skills and go to evasion and put some experience points in here, look, um, I think we needed four for that. So if we spend four, 400 experience points and then go to abilities and evasion, we can now grab parry. This doubles the evasion bonus granted by your primary melee weapon. Um, I think we've got a, sh a sp I think we've got a spear, so I'm not sure what the evasion bonus is on this one. Um, yeah, so I think the evasion bonus is actually the one at the end. That will be the curved sword. So if we were using the curved sword, we could get evasion. Well, I'm just going to wait for that one first. I've also got a couple of tangled uh, tangle thorns up here. Tangle thorns are dangerous thing, uh, like I like dangerous bushes that attack you with their thorns, as you might expect. I want to kill this damn thing. Let's see if we can throw the dagger at him. Ah, missed him. <laughs> he's a he's a sneaky little orc. Now he's going to call all his friends. Okay, we got another one. Here he is. Try and throw the dagger. Really, what we want is a. Oh, I threw the curved sword at him. <laughs> I actually did quite a lot of damage to him. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. I actually meant to throw the, the dagger. Okay. Oh, he turned to fight. Okay, we've slain one orc scout. Have we gotten any more daggers? Yes. Throw, see. Okay. 
Okay, we killed him. So we've got the the scouts off our back. Let's close that door and just try and get out of here so we um, get away from anything else that's coming towards us. I'm not going to worry about the tangle thorns now. Uh, we've got a couple. We've got a patch of sunlight here. Uh, so I can't remember what sunlight does. Obviously, you're not going to be able to hide so well in it. Uh, but I think it's also. I think there might be some other effects that it has too. While I'm going to play, uh, I'm going to talk to you about the, uh, the the kind of what you're supposed to be doing in this game, right? So you'll remember if you watched the episode on Rogue that oh, we got a special dagger. This is interesting. An orc scout comes up the stairs. Okay, so enemies can come from different floors in this one as well. Let's quickly let's wield this dagger and see what we've got. Uh, oh no, we've got to pick it up first, and we're going to wield it. Uh, C. You were wielding a spear. Now you're wielding a special dagger. Your movements become quieter. You recognize it as a dagger of murder. Okay, so we got a really. This is a really nice item. Uh, this is going to give us a plus one to. Uh, what was that? Yeah, it's, I think that's a plus one to parry. So it gives us a, a parrying bonus, plus it's going to make us more stealthy. So if we actually go to the at sign, look. Uh, we're getting plus one stealth because we've got an item that actually gives us more stealth. This is a nice little item. While we carry it, the, these orcs are going to really, really struggle to see us. I'm going to kill him with it as well. Now, you can do a lot of damage with the daggers, by the way. This is not a game like, the, you know, like the older roguelike games. Oh, he, okay, he's run, up, he's run up the stairs. This is not a game like the older ones where it was, you know, the weapon, the difference in weapons generally was just the amount of damage they did or, you know, whether they hit more or not. It's still got, uh, it, we've still got that thing where we're, you know, we've got two hits and two damage. We've also got an evasion bonus now, so like a parry bonus, which we were looking at. So, for example, if we really wanted to go into that, we could actually go for the parry, and this would give us plus two on this weapon to uh, to evade. But anyway, I was talking about what you're trying to do in this game. So, for those of you who know a little bit of the, about the Silmarillion, you'll know what the Silmarils are. They were the the light of the trees, you know the. the the, the light of the trees, the great trees that Feanor trapped in uh, uh, some jewels, beautiful jewels, and they were just said to be so mesmer so beautifully made and mesmerizing, found a short bow look, uh, so beautifully made and mesmerizing that uh, anybody who saw them would just kind of instantly wanted them. They were like the MacGuffin of the first, <laughs> you know, of the first age, I guess. They were, that was the thing that made everything happen. The stealing, you know, Morgoth stole the Silmarils, and uh, that, and he killed the trees using uh, Ungoliant, which was like this big spider monster. And uh, so the, the, the trees were destroyed, the light was no more, and the only light that was left from the trees was captured in the Silmarils. So Morgoth stole them because he's, he's just the bad guy, and that's what bad guys do. And Fionnur was not very happy, and he started a war in order to get them back. Now, you, in this game have sworn to go and take a Silmaril from Morgoth's crown. So that is why you are here. You've infiltrated your way into uh, Angband, uh, or in, into Thangorodrim and the fortress of Angband. And you are there now to take out... Uh, yeah, to, to... You are not going to be able to kill Morgoth. I think you probably can, but I think it's very difficult. Um, he's not supposed to be someone you're really supposed to be able to kill. He's a, you know, he's a god, really. He's a, he's a god. So... You shouldn't really be able to kill a god. We've got a wolf here. Let's kill this wolf. You stealthily attack the wolf. The wolf notices you. The wolf flees in terror. Do you see that? The wolves move fast. But we actually... We managed to... Uh, that's going to throw the dagger. Okay, we killed the wolf with a dagger. So, um, yeah. I forgot what I was talking about. But yeah, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get down into, into uh, further down into the dungeon. The 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 amulet of Yendor MacGuffin in this game is the Silmaril, and you've got to actually get it off Morgoth. So uh, Morgoth is very very powerful, I believe. I've never actually got that far into the game. Let's st sneak around these wolves. Now, you because you get experience for sneak for for encountering stuff as well. You don't have to play as a combat as a fighter this is one of the reasons why this game is so good by the way you'll notice that there's no character classes in the game you just build your character however you want to play it oh we found a trap okay we disarmed the flash trap um getting through these tangle vines is going to be difficult uh the dagger's not going to do very much damage to them so i think we're going to have to let's equip let's wield the curved sword okay and now we're going to go and hit these tangle vines you hit the tangle thorn sorry and we've slain that one. Okay, the Tanglethorn teared, teared at us. Uh, it does 
3d3 damage. That's actually quite a lot. So you've got to be a bit careful with that thing. Um, there's a spear over here. Now, it's not one of those games where... There are there are cursed items in this. Um, yeah, you see a spear. Now, that would be good for us to pick up. And we can at least, you can throw spears in this. Yeah, there are cursed items, so you have to be careful about trying on random magic items. I think we're going to go down the stairs now. We've, we've exhausted this dungeon. Now, you can go back up um, to the floor bef before you. But you can only do it a few times before you start getting blocked in. So you can go down and up and down and up and down and up, you know, if you want to get more experience or, you know, you're trying to avoid some enemy or something. But after a while, you get there's kind of a cave in that stops you from going higher. So it the game does gradually drive you down. It's not like Moria or Rangband where you can go down to, you know, 2000 feet and then claw all the way back up again. And there's no shop level either. Oh, the doors burst open. Like, let's let's sneak. Found a cloak. It's going to give us plus one protection. Ah, now you see those two orcs? They're shaded. It means they've not seen us. Let's sneak ourselves into the corner here. Okay, they passed us by. Okay, there we go. Look. So, as you can see, stealth is a big thing in this game, and you can play the game entirely as a stealth game. You can you can win the game apparently by not by barely killing anything you killed a mulip a mulip claws you i didn't kill it i hit it now this thing uh, yeah this thing can uh make your torch sputter as well yeah okay grab a wooden torch what have we got here we've got some arrows let's grab those arrows we've got 95 arrows that's a lot of arrows now uh, let me just see how much that's cut how much that weighs yeah, 95, uh, 9.5 9 pounds. There's a lot of arrows. Um, let's just see what's through this door before we go and check, take on that room full of enemies. Oh, there's a mulip again. The mulip notices you. So you saw that it was, uh, it what, didn't notice us at first. Okay, we're, we're actually fighting with this um, scimitar at the moment. We're getting minus one to hit, but it's going to do 2d8 damage. Oh, we got a low hit point warning. Okay, we killed the mulip. Okay, so we're, we're actually quite damaged. Now, uh, we're also bleeding. We are likely to bleed out now um, because we've got bleeding four. So if... It, yeah, look, if I... Yeah, we... No, we're not going to bleed out completely. The bleeding is... It says bleeding three. We've got three turns of bleeding and then we've got six points of health. So we're going to be okay. But there is a way you can stop this. And because it's the first game, I'm just going to show you this. So let's pick the song, the song of Staunching. Now, we need three skill points in in group uh yeah in song so we're going to have to go into the character sheet we're going to hit i to increase skills and then we're going to go increase song by one we're going to spend 300 experience points and then we're going to go hit a to abilities go to song and then we're going to pick the song of staunching yes i want that ability so now this will uh, actually stop bleeding so if we press s to sing and then it's uh, f for the song staunching you begin murmuring a song of soft and soothing words. Okay, you feel your wounds close and your body heal. The bleeding stops now. Every turn, we're gonna we're gonna sing this every turn, and you'll see our voice will drop by a point every turn. Now, other people can hear you, by the way, while you're singing. Oh, we found the leather armor. We're gonna grab that. In fact, we can just wear it straight off the floor. Press W, and then we're gonna press the minus key. You're wearing leather armor, so you'll see that's minus one and one D four. Minus one means you're you're harder to hit now because you're wearing armor. So we're at, our evasion goes down by one, but we gain 1d4 um, protection. So we can shrug off attacks. Like anything that only hits you for one point of damage, for example, we're going to immediately shrug that off. Let's close this door. We're going to sneak into this corridor. And you'll see, look, our health's going up every turn. I'm just going to hit the five key. And that's going to wait. And you'll see our voice is going down by one every turn. and But the health is going up, look, as well, um, every couple of turns or so. So uh, you're you're trading your your magic points look for healing. This is like a regen. You, this is like casting regen on yourself, but you only you can only use it as long as you've got voice. There we go. And we're going to press uh, S and then S again, and that will end the song. So quite right early at the game, you get quite an access to quite a powerful healing ability if you want it. Uh, wow, we've got a lot of stuff here. Now there's other songs we can grab. Let me just go back into press tab and go into the uh, skills. And then we'll go to song again. We'll look at the abilities. We've got the Song of Silence. 
Dampens all nearby sounds, making it harder for opponents to hear you and each other. If you're going for a stealth build, this is really, really strong. I think what we really want to do is go for evasion, though, and let's increase that parry ability. Excuse me. So we've got three abilities that we can take here uh, in evasion, because I think we're going to go with evasion. Uh, dodging gives you plus three evasion if you moved on your last turn. So if you move... Uh, you know, if you're trying to run away from something, for example, you'll get a dodge bonus. So it makes it hard for you to hit if you're moving. Blocking doubles the protection roll for your shield. We don't have a shield yet. And uh, parry doubles the evasion bonus. Uh, let's go with that. I think that's good. If we can get a weapon with a nice parry bonus, that would be really, really powerful. So let's actually equip. What are we equipped at the moment? We're holding the curved sword, aren't we? Yeah, it's harder to hit with, but it um, it does 2d5 damage. And it does have the parry bonus of plus one. Yeah, so you'll see now that we've actually got plus nine to evade, uh, invasion and 1d4 protection. Oh, this thing's coming close. What is it? It's a mulip. Okay, let's just try and go around that. There's a set of gauntlets. It's going to make us... Ah, oh, now this has got a parry penalty on it, look. So we're going to lose one, uh, one to parry, but we'll gain another d2 on our defense, on our protection. I think we're going to grab that. Let's let's wear those as well. Actually, uh, I don't think we lost anything. Oh, no. I think that was an attack penalty we got. Yeah, so we're only plus five in attack now. So we've got a, a bright orange potion. We're going to grab that. We're just going to run around all those enemies. Oh, we just snick. We crept right into a bunch of orcs. Okay, they avoided us. There's a load of them. Let's just wait for these guys to pass by. Okay, now there's a Mulip, uh, and I, I surprised it and hit it. Orc Skirmish has seen me as well now. We're in trouble. We've got another bright orange potion. Let's close this door. Oh, okay, we've got a lot of Orcs following us. We're going to close the door. Okay, they followed it. They opened it. Try and kill this Orc Skirmisher. Now, fighting in a corridor is a bit of a mixed blessing because they'll only fight, you know, obviously you can only be hit in one direction. Uh, you know, you can't get surrounded. The problem is, okay, he's fleeing now. You'll see that uh, he's wounded and this here shows you how much hit points he's got roughly. Uh, and you see fleeing minus seven. That's his kind of morale. So he's legging it. Um, let's close the door and we'll get out of here and we'll go around the other way. And we're going to sneak through because it looks like we've got an... Uh, we've got a bird of some kind, an orc, and a wolf. <clears throat> yeah, we've got a wolf, an orc, scout, and a grim hawk. Let's just move. Oh, orc, orc skirmisher starts a warning, and he's woken up the scout as well, and the no wolf. And yeah, he's so the I, I bumped into an orc, and he basically woke everybody up. That's what they do. Let's kill him. Oh, we got him. Okay, so we got a good hit here. Uh, we got we actually got 25 as our roll and we got he only rolled six so we got 19 so we got a whole bunch of extra dice we did 4d8 damage um and we rolled an 18 he rolled a four we did 14 damage we bashed him in one hit pretty much okay let's get out of here we've got a bird to kill okay we killed the grimhawk and we got a wolf okay we're not hitting so often now because we've got these gauntlets on but we're not getting hit as we're not taking much damage because we're negating between two and six damage each time we get hit okay i've uh, slain the wolf there's another wolf okay you got to be careful getting surrounded like this well not surrounded but lots having lots of uh enemies okay orc skirmisher yeah we got two here now and we got a we got a stronger orc as well okay we killed the wolf yeah they, they don't want to get close to me look they're, they're smart. The way that they fight, they wait for you in the doorways. Look, the AI in this game is pretty good as well uh, for a roguelike. The, uh, all, the, all the monsters have got really unique AI. Okay, we're, we're dueling with these orc, sk orc skir skirmishes here. Now, if you, there's abilities that you can get that cause them pain and, like, confuses them. Um, there's abilities you get that kind of make enemies run away from you. For example, we've got a whole bunch of experience now. So if we hit... We could actually get the we got the, get the song of Elbereth. And this will cause fear in the uh, in the servants of Morgoth. We get the song of silence, made us more silent. Uh, the song of challenge is good because it makes them come run at us. Basically, I think I'm going to get that because I like that ability a lot. Let's call, let's actually do this. 
So B is the song of chat. Uh, yeah, you sing a song of mockery and scorn. They're going to come straight for me now, which means that we can actually, we don't have to worry about them trying to lurk. They're just going to come right at me. Now, not all of them are going to be able to do that. We've got an Aspen Staff. Let's stop this song. So we save our, our magic points. And we've got another bright orange potion. Uh, let's fire at the orc. Oh, we killed it, look, with the arrow. And there's a, da there's a special dagger as well. All right, we've got a whole bunch of cool magic items now. Let's see what this dagger is. Let's wield that dagger. Okay, we don't know what it is yet. We might find out when we kill something with it. I think we'll go this way. Oh, guys, I'm going to end the episode because we're at 40 minutes and I, I don't want to make the mistake of having a really long first episode again like I did with Moria. So I'm going to end the episode here. Um, stick with this game. I'm only just getting started with explaining how it works and it's you're going to see how amazing it is. Um, out of all the roguelikes that I play, this is one of my favorite. Along with Brogue, I think this is probably my favorite roguelike. So, and Brogue's really good as well. So yeah, stick with it, guys. And let me know what you think in the comments. Do you like this kind of content? What do you think of this game? Do you like the Tolkien theme? Like, is this your bag? I'd like to hear. And I will uh, catch you next time. Take it easy.